It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Furman women's basketball head coach, Jackie Carden. Carson, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Can you talk about how you started your coaching career? Yeah, it's very, uh, it's a little bit unorthodox. I never thought I was going to be a coach. Um, I actually played overseas uh, for two years after my career at Furman and and then came back home. I was supposed to go to Russia and I had zero desire to go to Russia. So I came back home to start getting hours um, to go to PA school. I was either med school or physician's assistant school. And during that time, I started coaching AAU for Fairfax Stars organization. And that's when you could win a national championship at the AAU level. And so I was super stoked um, to have a bunch of girls on our team that were super talented and and um, high major young ladies. And I, I, I personally trained one of those young ladies that was on the team. and. And while I was at an AAU tournament, my old assistant coach, Tim Taylor, who is now the head coach at Navy um, uh, for women's basketball, he's like, you need to coach in college. And I was like, no, I'm good. And he's like, no, you, you really, you're good. You're, you got a basketball mind. And I was like, no, coach, I, I, I don't, I'm not interested. He's like, well, Bucknell has an opening. So if you're interested, I'm going to, I'm going to put your name in the fire and you can tell her no. So um, Kathy Federaca, who was the coach at the time, called me. I went for an interview and that was, goodness, going on 18 years ago, and the rest is history. Can you talk about playing at the your alma mater? Yeah. Um, playing or coaching? coaching. I mean, alma? yeah, coaching at your yeah. alma mater. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely, um, it's fun. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a dream come true to be able to start your head coaching career at your alma mater just because You know, at the time that I was able to take the job, it just wasn't the same amount of success that I had as a student athlete. And I wanted any young lady who played in our program um, to know what it felt like to be a champion. And we still haven't eclipsed that goal yet, but um, we are a force to be reckoned with in the Southern Conference. And we are, we've gained back our respect um, as a a powerhouse in in the league. And so, uh, I want everyone, uh, every alum, regardless of when you play, to be super proud of this program. So to come back and be able to lead it as as somebody who's um, played in that gym and has been a student athlete on this campus and know all that it takes to to be successful here has just been an honor and a privilege. What have you accomplished at while at Furman? Yeah, so um, I had a really good career as a student athlete. Um, um, and then as a coach, like I said, one of the things I really wanted to do was just forget um, our name is one of the top programs back in the Southern Conference. I wanted that respect to the travel every time you hear from a women's basketball and think, gosh, they're, they're a program that needs to be reckoned with, you know, and so, um, and then we've just brought through some really, really talented and special young ladies that we've molded into great moms and great professionals, um, some professional basketball players, some professional in other fields. But I think that's one thing that I'm most proud of is just how we have developed and, and just transitioned these um, women to just be awesome, you know, wives and moms and um, professionals in other fields through a variety of programs that we do. So it helps to win some games and get that respect back from a, you know, a playing standpoint. But I think more importantly, it's just been really, really awesome to see the type of women that we have come out of our university and our program. That's wonderful that you help shape them into being successful people. Can you talk about your time at James Madison as the assistant basketball coach? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a Virginia girl. So um, I, I, my dad was military, but I went to high school in Virginia. And so James Madison was was a perfect transition from Bucknell uh, because one, I was about an hour and 45 minutes away from my parents and I um, I met my husband there. And so it was just, a, it was a great opportunity in so many ways. Uh, I spent five years there under Kenny Brooks, who's now the head coach at Virginia Tech. Um, and I had my hands in everything. So I was, you know, recruiting and obviously coaching and alumni and budget and 
Um, I, I feel like having my hands in so many different pots is the best way to prepare me, uh, that prepared me to be a head coach. Um, so I'm really grateful for the opportunity that, that Kenny gave me there. It was a phenomenal experience. We were a um, high powered mid-major program that was beating power five programs. We were ranked in the top 25. Uh, we were in the postseason every single year, either in the W, uh, the postseason WNIT or in the NCAA tournament. So just that level of standard of, of getting young ladies that completely buy in, um, that can do some things that people don't ex expect them to do. Uh, seeing the support around women's basketball at James Madison was, was phenomenal. Our, we had tremendous fans. So those, a lot of those things inspired me to be able to bring those things over to Furman once I got back. Can you talk about your time at Bucknet? Yeah, Bucknell was, like I said, it was my first coaching job. Um, I think everyone who gets into coaching realizes it is so much more than what you anticipate as a student athlete. You know, every student athlete thinks their coach doesn't do anything. They just come to work, they coach some basketball, and then they go back and they have so much free time and it's completely opposite. So Bucknell, obviously not knowing much about coaching, I went into it and it was a very eye-opening experience. And then being 20, uh, gosh, I was 24 years old at the time, um, living in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which is the only thing that's in Lewisburg is a uh, is Bucknell in a federal penitentiary. Um, that was definitely eye-opening. So it allowed me to really focus on if this is something I really wanted to do and wanted to continue on with. Um, and the coaching allowed me to um, get my feet wet in the profession and to learn a lot about, you know, how I could be a better coach in the future. Can you talk about the day in November of 2019 that you've got your jersey retired? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was really special and it was a little bit shocking. I found out probably about two or three weeks earlier. Um, we were actually leaving a, a staff lunch at um, JMU when I got a, a letter or an email saying that they were going to retire my jersey. And um, I mean, it was not something that I ever pictured happening. And, um, and, and like I said, it's a tribute to my amazing teammates and, you know, and what we were able to all to do um, as a player at Furman. But it, ironically, it was the first game of the year at JMU. We played Georgetown. It was a big game and we beat Georgetown at JMU. And then the next day I left and came and, and got my jersey retired. So it was a good whirlwind of two days and um, really, really special. All my I had a lot of teammates, my friends and my family. And um, my coach was able to come back and she hadn't been back in a really, really long time. So it was really a blessing and it was really grateful. And I'm, it was just an awesome opportunity. Can you talk about whenever you're in the stadium, seeing your jersey every day, whenever you play the game? Yeah. It's I mean, coach weird. the game. Yeah, it's super weird. I don't refer to it much. Um, it, I have to be really, really mad at something that they're doing from a culture standpoint, a groundwork standpoint. Um, I don't really notice it. You know, it, it's funny. We haven't, you know, one of my international players this year is from Greece. And she's like, coach, you don't ever just look up and see your jersey. I'm like, no, that's super weird for me. So um, I do consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to come back and coach somewhere where I had a, you know, a tremendous, a tremendous amount of um, success. I think at the same time, it allows our girls, if anything, to know that I've been in their shoes and that um, I, I know what they're going through and I know how you know, Furman is a very prestigious academic institution. So I know I, I can relate to them like when they walk out the court and they have to go study for all these really, really tough classes um, that I know what that feels like. So I, I think that helps more than them just seeing my jersey up there and, and remembering my playing career, even though they keep asking for film and trying to get them. <laughs> yeah, I haven't shown it to them yet, but I do have it, but I haven't shown it. Can you talk about the recruitment process now as a head coach? Yeah, it, well, it's really crazy right now with COVID. Um, everything is virtual. Everything is watching videotapes. And, um, you know, a, a home visit is now via Zoom. Um, and I think everyone just has to be really, really creative. But we're trying to recruit uh, high-character ladies. You know, I, at the end of the day, I have two little girls. 
Um, I never make any apologies about recruiting young ladies that I would want and wouldn't have any problem with them being around my children. You know, I think early on in my, in my you know, coaching career, I just try to recruit talent, um, but maybe they weren't a good fit or maybe they just weren't a good um, um, choice for other, you know, reasons outside of basketball, but they were talented basketball players and that never works out. So we, we try to recruit young ladies that are high character young ladies that really care about excellence on and off the, the court that are community driven, selfless, um, and just really care about playing hard in the culture. So you, you do have to recruit kids that play hard now. Um, that's not something that's a given like it used to be. So we want those kids that are gonna play hard, really commit um, to, you know, coaching staff, their professors, the community is asking and want to be natural leaders and want to win some games. So what are some future plans for the women's basketball program? Yeah, absolutely. Just to keep building, you know, we have just like what we tell our girls, we got to get 1% better every single day. You know, we are a very extremely young team this year. We have eight freshmen. Um, so every day, let's get 1% better, 1% better. So the same thing for our program is we got to get better and better every single year. Every single day, we want to continue to grow so that ultimately we were not only winning a, a championship, but winning continuous championships year after year or in the hunt to do so. Um, and then, like I said, at the end of the day, we want phenomenal women coming out of our program that are ambassadors uh, for all the uh, future women that are going to come into our program. Um, they're going to set a standard and um, leave a culture of just what this program is all about. So um, the, the future is bright. I think so. We say it all the time. Um, but we really just want to lock in and get young ladies that want to win championships and want to have excellence in everything they do. What are you preparing for due to Corona and the season might get cut short? Yeah, so we are just trying to schedule as many games as possible. Uh, we've lost some games, just like everyone else. Um, so th there, I don't think there's really a way to prepare for this. Um, our girls are being uh, phenomenal. That we have had zero um, COVID cases on our team and in our program. They're being very responsible and um, as much as possible. Um, but we, we know that it's a matter of time before we're going to lose a game or God forbid, you know, that someone in our program um, comes down with symptoms or comes down with a virus. And then we all pretty much go into lockdown. I have friends who are head coaches of programs that are cur currently their whole program are in 14 day quarantine for contact tracing. So it's just a really scary time. So I don't know if there's fully anything we can do to prepare for it. Um, I think we just try to schedule as much as possible and see what happens and hope that we can play as much of a season as possible. What advice would you give upcoming women's basketball players that are looking to get recruited to the next level? Yeah, like I said, the number one characteristic is just work hard. Just have a, um, just know that the opportunities are there, but if you don't work hard, both in the classroom and on the court that you're gonna be overlooked by the kids that do. And so continue to work hard, obviously build your skill set, um, be a multi-dimensional player. So don't just be a three-point shooter. Don't just be, a, you, know, um, you know, just a driver. Be able to expand your offensive game and reach out to coaches, get your film out there. Right now we are all recruiting virtually. So if you have a desire to play at the next level, send film out to coaches, send film out to um, your high school coach, engage your high school and your AAU coaches. Don't try to do it all on yourself because there's a lot of you know, access that we can have to coaches that we don't, can't necessarily have to our younger recruits. So um, just, just stay confident, but we'll also work hard. Uh, that's all it is, is you have to be able to work hard you know, when you're not in season. That's when we tell our girls, if you wanna be an all conference player, then you gotta work hard when we're not in season. When we're in season is when we're putting it all together. You get better outside of the season. So continue to work hard, um, get better every day in your craft, listen to your coaches, be coachable and um, just uh, keep grinding. That's wonderful advice. What advice would you give upcoming college coaches that are looking to get into the profession? Yeah, well, I definitely reach out. It's very similar to what you would give the advice to a, uh, to a recruit is, uh, I think one of the things that I've been really proud of and happy about during this whole um, um, break that we had during COVID is 
developing like mentoring relationships with so many young up and coming coaches. They reached out. Um, there's so many um, webinars and Zooms that you can do where college coaches and all, high school coaches, coaches at every level, men's and women's, uh, FIBA that are getting together and exchanging ideas. You have to study the game if you want to be a successful coach. You have to read books on leadership. You have to know how to manage the Gen Z kids, you know, and and so continue to read, continue to grow. Um, if you want to get a job quick at the college level right now, have some experience with doing Photoshop and um, that is almost like, especially at the smaller schools, coaches that have some experience with Photoshop and virtual uh, making movies, that is the go-getter right now for, you know, recruiting. So having, a, again, a skill set that is much bigger than I was a really good player, so I should be a really good coach, because that doesn't always correlate. Um, sometimes the best players are, you know, are not very good coaches. So study the game, continue to reach out to those coaches that you envy, uh, try to connect with them from a mentoring level, um, read books, a uh, ton of books. And, it, and it's a little bit harder. I would say you used to be able to sit in on practices, but you probably can't do that in most uh, gyms right now, but just continue to study and, and grind it out. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the program app? Yeah, absolutely. So both on Instagram and on Twitter, I'm Coach Carson FU. Um, and I, I love, love to tweet a lot about my family and the program both and just anything I, I feel strongly in. Um, and then the program is Furman, F-U-R-M-A-N, W-B-B on both social medias as well. And so, and then we're also on Facebook. Thank you again, Jackie, for your interview and best of luck in this upcoming season. Thanks so much, Brandon, for having me. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk Twitter at talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Jackie, for your interview and best of luck. Thanks so much. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.